All right, last section in chapter three. Um, we've done addition and subtraction, multiplication, and now we're doing division. So this is division of whole numbers. Um, and just like we started out all four of those sections, well, this is the fourth one, I guess, all the other three sections, we're going to start it in much the same way and define by what we mean by division. This one mirrors a lot of how we described subtraction, by the way. Um, for any whole numbers A and B with B not equal to zero, <clears throat> when we say A divided by B equals C, this is if and only if. C is the unique whole number such that B times C is equal to A. A is called the dividend, B is called the divisor, and C is called the quotient. So this is typically how division is sort of presented and thought when children first learn about division, is they think of it as somehow sort of filling in the gap of a missing multiplication problem. So it would look something like this with some numbers. Oops, that's not the good color to come with this one. Something like this. So 6 divided by 2. And we would ask ourselves, if it equals something, I'll put a question mark. It, the question is, what do I need to multiply by 2 to equal 6? And so we turn the division statement into a statement about multiplication with what we would refer to maybe as a missing factor, right? What's missing in this spot for this to make this work? Okay, is that good? Okay, so again, like we've done in all the other sections, we're going to look at some models for division, okay? And one of them is um, repeated subtraction. I'll start with that one. Junie has 24 rocks. She wants to give them to six of her friends. How many rocks will each friend get? So it's probably important for me to sort of point out that um, these models have less to do with the structure of the language as they do with how we solve them, okay? That's different than what we did with, say, multiplication, right? The multiplication word problems, it was an array because it visually pictured it as an array, right? We got flowers we're planting, or desks we're arranging, or cupcakes in the cupcake pan, or whatever. It visually looked like that. This is more about how we process um, actually solving it. These three, these methods are. So when we do repeated subtraction, what we want to have envisioned, and these are small numbers, so it, it works well enough to sort of draw it out this way, is that we have 24 rocks and they're sitting here, right? And we want to give them to six friends. And so what we do is we go through all six friends and we give them each a rock. And once we've done that, we have six fewer rocks than we had before. So we've subtracted off six rocks. And now we have 18 left. And then we do it again. They give them all another six rocks. And we end up with 12 left. And we do it again to get six left. This continues on, whoops, until there's none left or until there's fewer left than six. So these don't have to be perfectly divisible. So I, I could have had 26 rocks and divided them by six and gotten a remainder of two. That would be fine as well. But the answer itself is how many rocks we gave each friend. And if you take a look, this was giving one to each. This is giving two. This is giving them one. This is giving them a second one. This one gives them a third rock. And over here, we gave them their fourth rock. And so the number of times we subtracted, right, repeatedly subtracted, is the answer to the division problem. So each friend got four rocks. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is repeated subtraction. All right, let's change it. And you'll notice my, my question is the same in all the examples. Did you notice that yet? Because we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it with Junie and her friends. <clears throat> Still has 24 rocks, wants to give them to six of her friends. How many rocks will each friend get? This one is, there's two set models. There's the set partition model, which is the one we're gonna do first, and then there's a variation to it. And I mentioned the variation because it lends itself well to what happens when we start looking at division with fractions, uh, which we do this in proportional and statistical reasoning, which I know a few of you have had that, but it lends itself better, the variation lends itself better than this one does, and so I want you to see the two variations of that. All right, so Junie has her 24 rocks. She's gonna give them to each of her friends, and we want to partition them. And so what we do is we like make six different piles of rocks. Can you picture that? Like our six friends, but instead of going through and giving them each one and then going through and giving them each two, we're making six groups of rocks. Why? Because they're six friends. 
okay? So I'm gonna draw the rocks, and I'm gonna draw them um, in an array just because it's easier to draw my picture and then divide them out later um, the way I want to. So, whoops. All right, it's good enough. Okay, I think that's 24 rocks. <clears throat> Looks kind of like an array, but there's 24 rocks there. Um, some of the rocks are obviously very good friends with one another. They're right beside each other. Um, and so we're supposed to be grouping them in groups of, not groups of six, but in six groups. So I want to make six groups. So the way that I've drawn them, it's nice to put them into six groups because I've drawn them vertically that way. And so here's group one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's my six groups. I've made six groups out of them. So we do this. Oh, let's get the answer, and then I'll tell you when, you see, when you've actually used this or seen this used before. Um, so the question in, ends up then, how many rocks are in each group? And the answer is four. Four rocks. Um, and so you can imagine, well, what if I didn't draw them that way? Well, maybe you put three in each group and then you end up with a bunch left over and then you have to spread them out too, right? Same idea, so it doesn't necessarily have to be that you sort of know the answer before you draw this. But here's, here's one of the ways that you've seen this done before. So as a teacher, you're going to put your kids in groups at different points, whether they're centers or whether they're gonna actually do group work, maybe it's a project, right? It's gonna happen. Maybe they're in reading groups, I don't know. But you're gonna put your kids in groups at some point. I put you guys in groups, right? You get to control one of two things when you make groups. You either get to control the number of groups that you have, or you get to control the number of people per group. And obviously there's interplay between those two things, but you get to control one or the other. And then the secondary piece of whichever one you're not trying to control, it comes about by, by the fact of how many people you have. So as a teacher, if I want to only have six groups because I feel like I can accommodate and go to each of those six groups, then what you see teachers do is something like this, at least one of the ways is that you say, let's number off by sixes. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah? I did this with my calculus class the other day because there was only so much board space. And that's what I determined is that I can only have four groups on the board. This room doesn't have much board space at all. The room that I was in had three boards. I can only have four boards, four groups at the board. So I actually did, I numbered them off by fours. They numbered off by fours and I put them at groups with board space because that's the board space I had. I controlled the number of groups, okay? That's what this model does. It controls the number of groups. The other model, the variation of it, is going to control, instead of the number of groups, it's gonna control the number of items per group. So Junie has 24 rocks. She bags them together in groups of six. I've changed the problem just a little bit so that you can get still the answer four. Our answer is gonna be, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry, I have something written down on my paper, but yes. So um, if she gives one bag to each friends, how many friends will receive a bag of rocks? So at this point now, we've got, I want my same 24 rocks as before. So we're gonna copy paste. Okay, here's my 24 rocks. And so what she's controlling now, instead of controlling the number of friends who get them, is she's gonna control how big the bags are. So she's gonna put six rocks in a bag. So you can do whichever six rocks you want to, just so that you can see that it doesn't matter if they're in rows or columns. I could put these six items in one rag, bag, right? And I could make another bag with these, with these six. Uh, and I could make another bag with you know, these six here. And I could pick a la my, my last bag with these six down here. So I have six rocks per, group, per bag, right? She bags them together in groups of six. So if she's controlling that each of the bags has six rocks, then by sheer um, numbers of what's going on, she's controlling how many people get rocks. So how many friends would get rocks in this case? Well, it would be four friends, right? Four friends would actually get my numbers of rocks in this case. So I would like to make mention of this just in case um, whenever you take proportional statistical reasoning, <coughs> a bigger issue is not made of it then, is that one of these models works really well and the other one doesn't work very well for division with fractions. So I know we're not doing fractions in this class, but I want you to think about this one over here. 
over here, I'm controlling how many groups I have of something, right? Well, I can't have a fractional number of groups. That doesn't make sense. How do I, con how do, how do I say I'm going to have half, half a group? Like, that doesn't make any sense. But on this one, I could control the size of each group to be one half. Now, it doesn't work very well with rocks, but imagine those rocks are cookies. Could I make bags that have half a cookie in each bag? Yes, I could. So this model works better for um, fractional division than the other one does because of the way it's structured. Okay? I feel like, yeah, I was like, I feel like there's one more. The last one is the one that I was thinking of when I first started this um, and mentioned missing factors. So missing factor model, <clears throat> same problem. Junie has 24 rocks, wants to give them to six of her friends. How many rocks will each friend get? Notice this is like the first two, not like the last, the last one we did. And so what we do instead is we think of it in terms of a division problem. We're dividing by, whoops, uh, six, and it's going to eat... Yeah, it's going to equal something. That's what we're doing, right? We're taking 24 and dividing by 6. And what we do is we change this problem into a multiplication problem. We say 6 times something is going to equal 24. Okay, so there's no visual picture for this. This is a missing factor kind of um, equation perspective maybe. And we would hinge ourselves back into what do I know about multiplication to do this? And, of course, the answer that goes in the blank is, again, the number 4, right? I've got the number 4 going in the blank here. So I would still end up getting four rocks. But from the perspective of multiplication, instead of from the perspective of either subtraction or um, partitioning is the other option. So, and again, notice the note here, although I've said it again, we'll read it as well. Three of the four models above do not represent different types of word problems. They did when we did subtraction, for example. But rather they represent different ways of solving the same word problem, okay? So here's what I would like for you to do. You're going to get into your groups. This will be the last thing we do, and then we'll do our, our group work, okay? So um, you're going to get into your groups the same we did before, although we might have to shuffle a little bit since not everybody's here today. And you're going to create a word problem for each of the four models. And three of your problems are going to be the same, right? Just like mine were. Three of the problems are going to be the same. But you're actually going to write down the solving part of it on this one. We didn't do that before. We omitted the solving part. We created the other problems. There's one problem that will have a different wording of it, right? It's the one that's the variation of the set partition one, okay? So I'm going to stop the video because, uh, or actually I'm going to pause it because we'll come back and we'll read ours out loud. Okay, let's talk and figure out what you guys have. So every group's going to share something, one. You're just going to share one. Um, and so somebody tell me, these are our four, prob our four types. What is a problem that your group had? Let's do one, one of you that would do um, the three that matched, okay? So you've got your repeated subtraction, your set partition model, or your missing factor model. What did you use? Faith. No, I put Sam has 18 animal crackers. He wants to equally share between him and his two friends. How many will each person have? Okay, so we're dividing up animal crackers. Great. So Sam, Jocelyn, which one do you guys want to do? Do you want to do partition model or the variation? Uh, we can do the part partition. Okay, do your partition model. Um, we are putting in each bank account. We have 30 eggs and five kids have to. How many eggs will each kid be able to find with each kid getting the same amount of eggs? Excellent. And my mom would make a rule that would say that to them. She would tell them, <laughs> you can only pick up six eggs. She would tell them that. It's happened. Okay. Um, how about missing factor? That's the same of this variety. Which one's do? Rayleigh, go ahead. Um, Abby has 16 cake pops and she wants each one. Okay, cool. All right, and so you guys get our last one. So the variation on your set partition, what'd you guys have? Somebody wanna read it? I can't. Okay, <laughs> um, thank you, Mackenzie, go ahead. Says, Lily has 20 cookies. She groups them together to create gift bags for her roommates. Each gift bag contains five cookies. How many bags will she have for her roommates? Very good, so the difference being that we know how many is in each group with that one, right? Gift bags with cookies. All right. All right, we're going to stop there on this for today.